So anyway, as you could tell, this used to be a floodplain. The, the, the water used to come up to, you know, about right up, uh, and maybe about right up there where there's tech sodium roots are. I don't know why they got the, the caution tape up here. You know, who knows? Maybe there was, maybe there was a crime scene. But uh, you got two important uh, keystone species, as you call them. This is Taxodium mucronatum, Montezuma cypress. This is the northern extent of its, its range. It ranges all the way down into uh, the, the uh, arroyos in the farm fields of southern Oaxaca State, Mexico. And then uh, you got Sable Mexicana. The Sable palm, pretty nice. It's a native palm tree, not like the tacky ones they sell at Home Depot that the suburbanites like to put in their yard. Because people associate palm trees with paradise, evidently. I just associate them with the uh, fucking grasses, which is what they are. But and then up there in this uh, wonderful canopy, you got the uh, Tillandsia bailei, that large Tillandsia up there. Of course, uh, a relative of uh, pineapples in the bromeli bromeliate family. Bromeliaceae, and then the other uh, little little Tillandsia is the Tillandsia recurvata, this guy. The Balmas, they call it. You get them in Austin, too, all over the power lines and shit. And, you know, I had a friend who lived up there. Used to get them in his yard all the time. And it, to, to Lanzi Recurvana, you even get in the, the uh, fog deserts of Baja, California, growing on the cacti. Real weird. They get nourished by the fog. And then there's the Talanzia bailei. Which, again, Talanzias, they're interesting because they their roots serve a purpose, uh, Mainly just to anchor them to the stem of another plant. The, the roots don't, uh, the roots don't, you know, really absorb water. What absorbs water is the trichomes on the, uh, on these bastards. The trichomes, of course, is just a fancy word for hairs on a plant. Probably got a lot of coral snakes here too. Which I think the people, I think people try to kill them. Some guy came in here and killed like five of them. Pretty docile snake. Deadly, but very docile. It's so weird. It's so weird to come here. You know, I look at I look at coral snakes and rattlesnakes now. After being in Australia for two weeks, I look at the coral snakes and the rattlesnakes. They're like fucking garter snakes to me. They're they're relatively non-threatening. You know, you get you get bit. You just make sure you get that anti-venom in you. But you go to Australia and some of those things. I mean, anti-venom or not, you're fucked. And people just have such a different attitude. So the, the snakes down there are more dangerous. But, uh, you know, you don't get these uh, rednecks doing roundups and shit like that, trying to kill 90 of them at once. They just, uh, the Australians actually appreciate their snakes. I think it's because uh, Stevie Irwin was down there. I think he did some good work for the overall culture. Whereas uh, here in the U.S., we still generally have a culture of moronics when it comes to much of this stuff. You know, and I'm not blaming anybody. I'm doing what I can to, uh, to uh, change it. You just got to show people a different way. That's all it is, you know. Don't need to shit on anybody. Just show them a different way. You know, secretly behind closed doors, I might uh, wonder about their intellectual capabilities. If their outlook is so uh, depauperate as to just kill anything that they're afraid of. But, uh, you know, when it, up, up close and personal, I just show them a different way. I want you to not try to kill this thing, just appreciate it. So anyway, it's just funny. I mean, I guess if you're in Australia and you try and kill a Taipan, you know, the, the odds are a lot... Uh, Higher, you fuck up trying to kill a taipan, you're dead in two hours. Whereas if you fuck up trying to kill a, you know, a, a great basin rattlesnake or a timber rattlesnake, you just go to the hospital, get some antivenin, and might lose a, might lose a pinky or something. But anyway, look at that nice tech sodium. Again, relatives of bald cypress, same family as redwoods. They can live uh, quite long. Here's the cones. See, the, here's the cones of those uh, Montezuma cypress. They just kind of disintegrate and then uh, of course dispersed by water bald cypress the same way they got these cones that just kind of disintegrate except these kind of look like shit they, I think it's because they don't that foliage that canopy should be a lot denser but since they don't get the since they got the river dammed up you can see this used to be a floodplain it doesn't get that much water anymore so all well, the trees are kind of taking a hit but uh, what a great fucking tree to stabilize the riverbank. You know, if you live in Texas, you should look into getting some of these uh, Montezuma cypress planted around you. If you say you live on a creek or something, you're worried about erosion, get those bastards planted up because their roots, you know, you plant one of these on a, the edge of a stream. I mean, look at these roots over here. We'll go take a look at these roots. 
these roots basically hold the stream intact. They prevent it from getting washed away. So you can imagine when, you know, settlers came in 100, 200 years ago, knocked all these out, cut them down for timber or just to make farmland, you get a lot more erosion. Yeah, there you go. See, nice little retaining wall. You can see the water level obviously used to come up to there. But nice little retaining wall for the, uh, the you know, for the erosion and what the shit... It keeps, you know, keeps the whole stream bank intact. I mean, look at it. And it's much prettier than the concrete, you know. So you get, uh, you know, Lenny and uh, uh, Vince to lay some concrete in there. You know, pay them, you know, $35 an hour or whatever they charge. You know, get a nice concrete retaining wall. looks depressing. Just get some Taxodium mucronatum. You know, it'll do the job eventually anyway. And you see this everywhere. There's still a couple of these old bastards on a Rio Grande actually in the water and it's doing the same thing holding the entire stream bank intact hey look just the carpet of legumes all the ebonopsis fruits everywhere they're kind of nice a little uh, really hard and woody you can see got a row of seeds on each side there's some of the, there's some of the you can see there's some of the fruits or the seeds right the ovules Hey, look at a little tiki torch. Give somebody a little mini Charlottesville there. Nice old bridge. And then there's the guinea grass. This bastard, this is, you can see it just fucking takes over. Brought by the ranchers from uh, Northern Africa, Western Arabia, the uh, Arabian Peninsula. Boy, it's kind of trashed here. But look, they got a nice set. Uh, they got a Malva Viscous over here. Yeah, there you go. Malva Viscous. Same family as cotton, chocolate, and what the shit? Malvaceae. And our native uh, Fromantia. You can see you got a, you got a column with all the, fused, the, all the stamens fused up there. Where's the epicalyx? You got an epic? Oh, yeah, there's the epicalyx. See all those green bracts? So you got the epicalyx, those uh, lengthy green bracts. Then you got the actual calyx, which is uh, that brack right there. And then you got the corolla, the petals. And then this, uh, all the stamens fused through a central column that surrounds the uh, the pistil, which is the female part, which is right in the center, coming out. It looks fuzzy. Look at all those little brown anthers releasing the pollen. Well, maybe not now. First time I've ever seen this plant, it was in a field of uh, human shit with uh, Taxodium mucronatum all around it in uh, northwest Oaxaca State. And it's quaint, is it not? Oh, fuck. No. Fuck. No.